Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now today we're going to do a simple practical and we're going to make uh, spinach pasta. Now when we hear of pasta we think of these Italian mamas that, that weave this amazing pasta by hand and it truly is uh, a genuine skill that gets passed down from generation to generation. But when you look at the back of most pastas uh, that you buy in the shop, dried pasta pack packets, they usually only have one ingredient and that is wheat, in most cases semolina. So they you're figuring how complicated can it be to just make pasta yourself from scratch? The answer, not very. Pasta is basically wheat, the semolina in some cases, or you just use strong flour and water. That's basically it. In some cases you put a pinch of salt, in some cases people can bind it together using an egg as well, but in most cases, the most of the pasta we buy is just flour and water. So we have two elements then, we have the flour and we have moisture. Today I'm going to do a similar thing, but instead of using water, I'm going to use some spinach. So I'm going to make spinach pasta using just two ingredients, spinach and flour and a food processor. Let's get to it. Okay, let's get started. Uh, to begin with, I've got 200 grams of strong flour. You can use wholemeal flour or any kind of um, variation, but I've got strong white flour here, mainly because when I add the spinach, it makes the color a lot more vivid. Um, but health-wise, if I was making this entirely for myself, I'd probably use wholemeal flour. So we've got 200 grams of strong flour, and then we've got 130 grams, roughly speaking, of spinach. So the basic ratio is um, two thirds spinach to flour. So if it was 300 grams of, of flour, you'd use 200 grams of spinach. So that's the kind of ratio we're looking at. And that should give you enough moisture uh, to help make our pasta. Okay, let's see what we've got. And there we have it. Now the mistake a lot of people make when they're making pasta is to, is it looks really dry and stiff and the mistake is to add too much water. Um, but, uh, but later on it comes to rolling it out, that can become a problem, but here we have it. It's got just enough moisture in it, I can feel it. It could even though we're a touch less, it's quite a little bit sticky. All I'm gonna do now is bring it together into a dough then we'll move to the next stage. Okay, we're finished with the food processor. All we're gonna do now is just gather our mixture together. And what you should have, is a slightly sticky but quite stiff mixture that surprisingly, believe it or not, just comb combines into a nice dough. All I'm gonna do now is just knead the dough a little bit just to bring any elements together. And this is quite a stiff mixture and that's what it should be. And you'll see why when we try and go to rolling out procedure. So, in essence, this is our blob of pasta. Now, to roll out the pasta, I'm going to be using a pasta machine. Now, a pasta machine is basically just uh, it's like a mangle. It's like a rollers, if you look at here, that adjust. So they can go really narrow, and they can go wide. And you start off wide, and each time you go through, it squashes a mixture tighter and tighter together, makes it thinner and thinner and thinner. After which, it can be cut up into different types of slices or spaghetti or tagatelli or, or whatever you want to do with it, or just pasta or lasagna sheets. So we're just going to use this just initially to roll out our pasta nice and thin. So. Let's do it. Now normally it's a two-person job, one person to crank, one person to gather, but I'm a one-man band. So let's see how I'll get on with just me by myself. So I'm going to throw this, put it through. And we can see it coming out the other end. There we go. First time through. We're going to do just two or three times on this setting and we're going to go to a smaller setting. Stage one, 
Next, I'm gonna, at the moment it's on its lighter setting, which is nine. I'm gonna go down, down to about an eight. Do the same thing again. see it's already starting to really stretch itself out. Now here's where it gets really important to note that your mixture shouldn't be too wet when you're doing it. The temptation is to think well when you're making pasta to make it like any other regular dough which nice and soft and pliable but really for pasta you really want quite a stiff dough because as you start to send it through the pasta machine it's really just squeeze out all the water and although it doesn't seem that significant at this point when it comes to either cutting it up or if you're gonna make it into spaghetti or something, then if there's too much water in it, when you start to cut it up into its strips, they'll just kind of stick together because of the water content. So I'm gonna make sure there's lots of flour in between so when it's coming through, it doesn't stick. Also, what you realize, it starts to get pretty big. You need to start with a small bit of dough before you realize it. You've got quite a large bit of dough, which is really hard to manage with just one person. So I'm gonna stop, cut this in half, and then work in two parts to make it easier to manage. So now I'm cutting it in half, and it's gonna carry on cranking it through, getting finer each time, until we end up with something of the consistency that we're looking for. So here we have quite a thin pasta now, pasta sheet. It's gonna put it through its final setting, on its finer setting, and that should stretch it out to almost twice the size. Now it's very important that you use, say, something like a strong flour because the strong flour has more gluten in it, which means that as you start to roll it out, the gluten in it, which is a bit elastic will help it to stretch as opposed to just breaking apart. So you need a little bit of elast elasticity so that your pasta can stretch a little bit, have a little bit of give, otherwise it may just break apart when, you, when you're making it. So final time through now, on the final setting. There we have our giant sheet of pasta. Now we can do lots of different things with this. This is, this is just fresh pasta. If you wanted to, you can cook it exactly as it is. You can cut it up, make shapes out of it. It's up to you exactly what, what you want to do with it. You can use a, another adaption to the pasta machine and take it into tagliatelle or into spaghetti. So we might give that a try in a minute. Okay, again, this is quite tricky to do with one person, but at least Good to get an idea how it works. As you can see, pasta coming out. And you can see how uniform the strips are. Just like that. Now you can see how some of them sort of stick together. That's because I think there's a little bit too much moisture in it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try running some through the finer setting, which is usually for spaghetti or for noodles. Now once you've made your pasta, if you're not going to use it straight away, then a good way to, to, to store it is to dehydrate it. Now we've used, if you look back at some of the other videos, you'll see we've dehydrated stuff before, um, but never pasta, but this is a good way to do it. I'm just gonna roll each one up into a little circle, and then I'm just gonna pop it in the dehydrator for a few hours, and that'll take whatever little moisture there is in it out, 
And then what you have is dried pasta, just like what you'd buy in a shop. The only difference is you've made it yourself. No additives, no preservatives, no guessing what might be in it. You know what's in it, just two ingredients, spinach and flour. And this is our pasta that we made earlier. And now, as you can see, it's fully dried out. And the pasta must be fully dry, otherwise it will go off. But as we dry, that's a preserving method because bacteria likes moisture. So if you take the moisture out of something, that allows it to keep for ages. Here we are, our fresh slash dried pasta. And there we have it. That's how easy it is to make spinach pasta. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook at Foodtech 101. And if you want to get in contact with me, you can get in contact me, with me via admin at foodtech101.co.uk. My name is Mr. Liebird, but you can call me Sir. I think you know.